Hi, I'm Mike DeNaro, and today I'm here just to talk about some of the different things that I've been carving. I started carving, I had to start thinking about it today, I started carving about uh, 20 years ago, and the first thing I carved was an ice fishing decoy. I had, I was an avid fisherman at the time, and I liked the looks of ice fishing decoys, but when I went to get one, they cost over $100 or so. So instead I went to the store and I bought a hunk of wood and I bought a knife and I started carving. Uh, in the beginning, I've looked at different things that I carved years ago and uh, it's quite a difference between now and then. It's kind of interesting. My first knife was uh, a Murphy knife. This is actually a Rick Butts, but it's very close, similar to a Nur Murphy knife that costs about $8. And I couldn't carve for the life of me. And I ended up getting uh, a strop. This wasn't the original one, but I bought it from a guy named Herb Dunkel down in, I don't know, Arkansas or something. I still couldn't figure out how to use it, so I called him up on the phone, and he spent about half an hour on the phone with me explaining, you know, half an hour of his time explaining how to use the $10 strap I bought from him. And I thought that was awfully nice, considering I didn't, uh, all I bought was a strap, and he spent that amount of time. And once I ended up uh, learning how to sharpen well, that's when things really took off. When I'm, it's funny, when I sharpen a knife, after I'm done strapping it, I take it and I go to see if I can shave some hair. And then if I can shave hair, I know it's working well. And if I'm really carving a lot, my arm all over here and my leg over there, because I sit like this, has no hair on it. You know what I've been up to. That's funny. Uh, the ice fishing decoys are pretty interesting because uh, they do have them. They, I was in a uh, carving contest once. It was... Uh, at Old Bethpage Village Restoration, and I entered, well, this, not one of these, but I had entered a nice fishing decoy in their decoy category, so when I went to the fair, they told me I was disqualified because it wasn't a bird, so I said to them, well, it's, it's a decoy category, it's not, you know, it doesn't say it's a bird category, a duck decoy, it just says it's a decoy, so finally they said, okay, fine, you could be in. And uh, the judges must have thought more highly than them because I won first place on that. Congratulations. So basically these, these are what I, I use. I have an assortment of knives here and I keep them sharp. I haven't been using this one much, but those four are my mainstay. And uh, a big knife, it's uh, a frost blade. It costs about $10, but in my opinion the, the frost steel is some of the, the best steel out there. And uh, a man I knew years ago, he ground down the tip for me to make it a little more manageable for uh, carving. And I use that a lot for bigger things, roughing things out, like when I'm carving uh, a cane or the cane handles. Uh, I enjoy making the canes a lot. This one, it's funny, I call it a uh, fish stick because mm. it's got fish on it and it's a mm. stick. A lot of uh, the handles on all my canes, most the body's mostly made out of basswood which is a really good wood. It's uh, got a tight, tight grain, and it's good for carving. The handles, I like to find wood. This is uh, Eastern Red Cedar, and I always think it's funny in my head that it's cedar because it's really uh, Juniper Virginiana, which is native to Long Island, but it's got a beautiful red color to it. And I'll find that in the woods, and uh, I look for things that have been uh, down for a while that I can cut and just take home and, and make into handles. The handle's the only thing, somebody's asking, like, what do I, do I sand things? The only thing that I ever sand that I carve are the handles of my canes because I expect them to be used. And if they're, if they're, if they have the carving marks like this and you use them a lot, you can end up getting uh, calluses or, you know, your hand's going to feel, it's not going to be too happy after a while. The canes I do expect to be used. I put a uh, steel shaft down them so that uh, they can bear the weight. You can put a lot of weight on the handle. It's not going to break off the handle. And all the canes I've made so far eventually have sold to people who uh, use them, people who need canes. And I'm happy for the fact it's people who need canes but wouldn't really want to carry one unless they had a neat looking one. And there's, there's a lot of neat designs you can do with that. Uh, currently, I've been doing a lot of Uncle Sam. I like Americana, and just really I carve whatever strikes my fancy. If something, if I see something that I feel like uh, working on, I just do it. I think you do have one Uncle Sam here, no? Yeah, this one actually, this is from years ago. 
this is one of a lot of my pieces most of my pieces I come up with my own designs this actually came from a book and I had done this back in 95 and this one's not for sale because that's uh, a happy Father's Day present that I had given to my father oh, years ago how sweet and when he passed on I uh, I made sure I got the Uncle Sam to keep for myself and that's really about it out of me folks very good thank you so very much Mike thank you